Cody Bellinger is back on the Cubs, and spring training started this weekend. Let's react on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Monday, February 26th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And let's talk about Cody Bellinger, who re-signed with the Chicago Cubs on a three-year, $80 million contract, which includes opt-outs after both 2024 and 2025. Scott, obviously, a great year last year for Bellinger. Seems like there was some skepticism in the real-life market, the same way there is mm -hmm. in fantasy. But all things considered, uh, I think returning to Chicago was one of the best options here for Cody Bellinger. Well, yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard to complain about him going back to the place where he did have his rebound season and the skepticism over his performance in terms of the exit velocities being low and outperforming his expected stats. Uh, those would those would be scarier if he went to a worse hitters park. If he went somewhere like San Francisco, let's say, uh, I, I might be completely out on him at that point. But he managed to put up the numbers he did in Chicago. He's back there. So I don't think venue is our concern with Bellinger. There still is a performance concern. It was the lowest average exit velocity of his career. And again, he outperformed the expected stats. But I did see an interesting note. Jeff, Jeff Passan of ESPN reporting uh, on reporting Cody Bellinger to the Cubs. He pointed out that Bellinger often cut down his swing with two strikes. And, you know, he he had a career low 15.6% strikeout rate. It seemed like he, he, he toned down his swing on two strikes, had the second best two-strike batting average of anyone in baseball behind just Luis Arise. And that probably helped to deflate his average exit velocity artificially. Now, his max exit velocities aren't those of a power hitter either. He doesn't have extreme pull rates like you'd expect somebody to have if if he's putting up good power numbers in spite of low exit velocities it's still a concern but that is a little bit comfort that that is a little bit of an explanation for why cody bellinger's average exit velocity was so low it was partly by design so that he uh was more of a threat with two strike counts in the end i think he's worth drafting as a top 15 outfielder in round four five let's say five round five of a 12-team league. Uh, there is some risk at that point, but again, it could be worse. It's nice that he's going back to the Cubs. Spring training started this weekend. Let's react to some of the biggest storylines. And your boy, Scott, someone we know you love, Cole Reagans, had five strikeouts over two shutout innings. And I saw a tweet from Lance Brozdowski that said one of Reagans' fastballs hit 101 miles per hour with 20 inches of induced vertical break. Perhaps after this, we will see the market shift a little bit. Cole Reagans mm -hmm. will come up a little bit in drafts closer to where you have him ranked. And I think this is meaningful to an extent. Look, first spring start, okay, whatever. It was the most dominant start we've seen so far this spring. Uh, like you said, his fastball peaked at the same point it peaked at last year. If nothing else, it showed us that Cole Reagans didn't shrivel up in the offseason because the track record was so short. There was the big velocity jump last year. Would it carry over? Yes, it doesn't. It's not the final verdict on Cole Reagan's being the real deal, but it is an encouraging first sign. And I think we may see him move up draft boards as a result. One of the Padres top prospects, Jackson Merrill, who originally is a shortstop prospect, moved to left field so far in spring training, trying to work on his versatility. Uh, he led off on Sunday. He went two for two with a double, a walk, a run and two RBI. He's been impressive so far. I know it's a really small sample, Scott, but this is an impact prospect who has a legitimate chance to be on the opening day roster. I think he's a favorite to be on the opening day roster, and I wouldn't have said that going in. I didn't know they were planning on trying him out in the outfield, but they don't have many options out there. They have two outfield spots open. They have a DH spot open. Even if they bring in one of the free agents, the Padres have holes. And Jackson Merrill, uh, they seem like they're giving him a chance. They have a history, the Padres do, of promoting prospects aggressively if they're high-end enough. They don't care that they're only 20 years old like Merrill is. They don't care that he's only reached double-A. And it's not like he put up ridiculous numbers down there. 
I don't know. I'm I'm not confident Jackson Merrill is a finished product, but for the upside, as late as he's going in drafts, I mean, he's an afterthought right now. Uh, I I'd take a shot, see how it goes, because I think there's a good chance he does wind up on the roster. All right, two last pitching notes here from the weekend. Hunter Green struck out four, debuted his new splitter and curveball, and talking about the splitter Sunday, he said, "quote The split was fantastic today. It was unbelievable. So just continuing." to work on it and get it ready for opening day and the rest of the season. Also, A's pitching prospect Joe Boyle threw two shutout innings with three strikeouts. He threw his fastball between 99 and 101 miles per hour. He introduced a new sweeper as well. Joe Boyle has nasty stuff, but the control was awful in the minors. Scott, any thoughts here on Hunter Green and Joe Boyle? Well, yeah, the, the Hunter Green, the two p- new pitches, that's going to be something to monitor throughout the spring, the par- the progress he's making with those because they're slower offerings, the splitter and the curveball, which can help help make his fastball more effective. It's a very high-velocity fastball, but um, it's, it's a bit too easy to hit considering. And if he's able to throw off hitters' timing more, that could be a game-changer for Hunter Green. Joe Boyle, meanwhile, yes, the control was terrible in the minors. That's what's always kept him from being listed among the top prospects. But after he was traded from the Reds to the A's late last year, came up for three starts through 66% of his pitches for strikes. That's plenty good enough. And his first spring start, he was throwing strikes too. The stuff looks unbelievable for Joe Boyle. 80 grade fastball and slider. He is somebody who is becoming a sleeper pick for me. All right, for more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. (laughs) 